So I've been out enjoying the Boxing Day sales, have a guess as to what I might have bought. I've always ummed and ahed about getting a onesie, but I saw this and I'm a massive Toy Story fan, so I thought I'd give it a go, and you know what? Oh my god, it is so comfortable. Now I see why everyone has one. Anyway, there will always be a special place in my heart for Good King Wenceslas, because in 2003, on the 150th anniversary of the song being created, I stood outside Sackville College and I sung the song. For the British media. I thought I did a pretty good job, along with the hundreds of other school children taking part as well. And we were all just so happy to say the word sod on national television and get away with it. Sackville College is an arms house in East Grinstead that provides accommodation for the elderly and it always has a warden who lives on site to take care of them. One of them, the Reverend Dr John Mason Neal, was a prominent hymn writer with Good King Wenceslas among his credits. Whenever I get home for Christmas, I usually meander through the town looking at the lights, and I emerge from the top of the high street and I see Sackville College, and it looks quite barren and deserted in the winter, but the spirit of the carol, it still rouses me. Yeah, that's a lovely cheesy image for you there. Carols are such a big part of Christmas. I mean, aside from the small matter of the story of the nativity, the carols define the crib service at my local church, St. Ribbon's on Christmas Eve. It's the one night of the year where the place is packed to the rafters, and with everyone singing and the robust organ notes, it creates such an ethereal, otherworldly atmosphere. I mean, it's wonderful. I know carols aren't for everyone, particularly if you're not Christian, but there's still plenty of festive music to immerse yourselves in. I'd be surprised if a local supermarket hasn't started playing Rocking Around the Christmas Tree and Last Christmas by the middle of November before going into a full-blown Christmas playlist by the start of December. I don't know, maybe working in retail has made me notice that a bit more this year. And just any festive event that you go to, you'll have Wizard, John Lennon and Slade all walking down the classics. But aside from the classics, there are numerous covers and original recordings. I mean, my godfather's brother, he notably has a Spotify playlist with a thousand and one Christmas songs. If I had nearly a hundred on my playlist, then a thousand and one, I just can't compete with that. I mean, I didn't realise there were that many. But when you think about it, so many artists do put one out. I mean, it makes sense. But still, a thousand and one. I mean, it covers every genre imaginable, and he adds more and more to it every year. Like this year, I found a cover of Earth, Wind and Fire's September. It's retitled December. I mean, it's brilliant. It's a little change like that. It's wonderful. I'm a massive music nerd as well, so I'm always finding new tracks every year that I enjoy a bit more and more. This year, I think it's Louis Armstrong, Christmas in New Orleans. I've never really you know, and enjoy that, well, not, not enjoyed it, but appreciated the track before, but this year I've given it a few more listens, and yeah, it's one of my favourites now. I suppose because my family loves music so much, Christmas music plays a big part in defining the festive period for us. Yes, the majority of them are as corny, cheesy and cliche as they come, but they also evoke such strong memories, and they get all my family singing together that I can't discredit them. Me and my dad are always in charge of the music at the Christmas Eve party, and I would be lying if I said I didn't enjoy it. Like, you know, just getting the playlist and organising it, you know, maybe changing a few around each year to find that nice order and you know, to get the momentum going. I love all that. I don't know why, I just do. I do have some ground rules though. I do try not to listen to any Christmas music before the start of December for a couple of reasons. Firstly, if you overplay it, it's only going to remove that spirit of festive cheer that you associate with it. And secondly, like anything that you indulge too much in, it's only going to annoy you after a while. I mean, I love Mariah Carey's All I Want For Christmas Is You, but it's the numerous covers and like the slow jam cover that you never listen to at any other time of year, but just it pops up and it's just like, oh my God, it grates on you after a while. I mean, I dabble in music journalism and admitting on camera that I'm quite a big fan of Christmas music might discredit that a little bit, but at the same time I can't help it. Music stretches back as far as possible into the history of Christmas celebrations and it always has the power to remind me of home wherever I am in the world and you know, it's a guilty pleasure. I'll always be thankful for it. Lord knows I can't remember why I first heard Fairy Tale of New York or I Believe in Father Christmas, but at the same time, it isn't that that matters. It's how it's become such a staple of my Christmas season over time. That's what really matters. As ever, it's how you enjoy celebrating Christmas, and I like it with all the musical trimmings. On the first day of Christmas, Zeppelin gave to me a video because I subscribed.